Welcome to Christ the Lord Clearwater's weekly message. I'm Pastor John Backus here in our studio in Clearwater, Florida, where we share the good news of Jesus on the Gulf Coast. We begin a new message series today called God's Words, God's Power. This first week, we'll see that words reveal the triune God who powerfully blesses you. Words reveal God, not secret symbols or incantations, not gemstones or divining rods. It's words that reveal God. This idea was affirmed strongly 500 years ago in the Reformation in Europe. God is not an idea that is constructed. That's a result of people's consciences or big councils of people getting together and thinking what would best represent the ideal of God. God is not constructed, neither is God discovered. You can't be a great spiritual explorer and uh, discover the qualities of God by experimentation or exploration. But rather, and this is a principal foundational truth of the Lutheran faith, God reveals himself to us using words. And that means if you want to be a theologian, a higher thinker, a deeply spiritual person, a a man or woman of faith, to be a theologian doesn't mean so much you need to be brilliant, but rather to be observant. To pay attention to what God reveals about himself to you in the scriptures. The fact that there is just one God that reveals himself to you is an idea that for most of history was exceedingly rare. This idea is called monotheism, that there is only one God to know, there's only one God to trust, and only one God to proclaim. Monotheism is different from the modern view of sports teams where each state or each city has their own franchise. So you may say, go Bucks, go Badgers, root for your home state, root for your alma mater, your home school. In much of world history, it was root for the God of the mountains, root for the God of the plain, root for the God of the west, root for the God of Babylon. But God is not a sports franchise. He's not geographically located, powerful by the forest and weak by the stream. As we read the writings given to us in the scriptures, the Christian Bible, we see that God is very concerned about idolatry. Wrong ideas that seek to mess with the inner life and the eternal well-being of people by practicing a simple form of deceptive identity theft. So you might say mathematically, the one number that represents the divine best is a one. But surprisingly today, we're going to see that the one number that seems to most frequently represent the divine is a three. Describe God mathematically. It's not easy to do. It's not that simple, one or three. It's not simple to do geometrically. The mysterious symbols of the Celtic knots and artistic traditions, the triquatra, attempts to geometrically come up with an idea that represents the shape or the, the nature of God. Visually, it's difficult to do. It seems through the record of human history that God was difficult and rarely spotted with the eyes. And even through the the revealed information in the writings of the scriptures, the visual picture that we create of who this God is, we're told that in the very origins, people knew and, and saw God with clarity. And then through the fall into sin, he became obscured. And after obscurity, he became a God of invisibility, not known to the human race. And finally, Revealing himself, it's as if the opacity was brought up and this invisible God was now seen again. Mathematically, geometrically, visually, it's hard to get our minds around the nature of God who is a being not human but divine by definition. Verbally, we meet this idea of there only being one God, one true God. I am the Lord. There is no other apart from me, he says. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. One God. And yet, when the Lord gave his church leader Aaron a statement of blessing to put his name over the people, he had Aaron give a threefold blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. 
These words were spoken at a time when God's people were in an apocalypse. Numbers was the book of a travel diary, the journey of a, a band of survivalists who had just barely escaped the, the nationwide divine destruction of Egypt. They headed out into the wilderness, this broken up caravan of people looking for a new beginning. They walked into ambushes and roadblocks. They walked into starvation and bland food. They walked into threats and storms and scorpions and disciplines on their wandering from prison in Egypt to promised land in Canaan. They wrestled with their life and their relationship with God. And they called out to him. And to reassure them, he gave them Aaron the pastor, the priest, and Aaron's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make your face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor. Turn his face toward you and give you peace. And with these words, this band of survivalists on their difficult journey through the sands of wilderness to their heavenly home had the reassurance. They had God's word that he was with them to bless them. And through the years as God revealed more and more about himself through progressive revelation, not a different God but a more defined and fully revealed God, we meet the New Testament church sharing the apostolic blessing Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, they would tell one another. Baptizing in the one name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mathematically, geometrically, linguistically, or verbally, trying to divine a concept of a a being of a higher order than us, not a lower order, not one we can dissect or diagram, not even describe, is a challenge. But today I want you to know that the triune God revealed in the Bible shows himself to you verbally so that you can receive powerful blessings from him. From God's words that reveal his triune nature come powerful blessings. I am in need, sentenced to the common destiny all humans face of death. Emotionally, there's a wreck in me. Morally, there's troubles in me. We live in this sickness called the human condition. The Bible verbally describes it as sin, a disease, a twisting of good into wrong, of love into selfishness, of kindness into hate. We strive for virtues and sometimes get a handle on a few of them, but in general, life is not what it should be and we are not who we were meant to be. And as we experience the brokenness of life, the Con- condemnation of a conscience, the hate or threat of violence or injustice from other warped human beings, we might step forward and call out in our moment of need, I am in need, God. Hear my words and respond with your power. Imagine if you're in an, a huge dark room and there's a spotlight shining in the middle and you call, oh God, reveal yourself to me. Step into this spotlight and answer my call for help. There is one God who would step forward and you'd hear this voice coming from the light saying, I am God the Spirit. I proceed from the Father and the Son. I enter your life, your heart now. I give you life and I give you light. I will create faith in you to trust me that will lead to peace and hope an optimism and a new way of thinking and living and loving in your heart. I am God the Spirit and I save. And yet as your voice echoes through that room, I need help, God, reveal your power to me. There's a different voice that that emanates from this center spotlight and this voice says, I am God the Son. I alone am begotten of the Father. I send you my Spirit who proceeds from me. Even before my human birth at Bethlehem, I was eternal God, God the Son, begotten of the Father. And yet I came into your world to use my lifeblood in human form to purchase you from your sin guilt, trade your life for mine and redeem you. 
Because of my actions in human body, in this human world, humans like you are forgiven and loved. Suddenly another voice speaks from this center point of light. I am God the Father. I gave my Son. I sent my Spirit. I knew you from eternity before the world was created. I, God the Father, I, God the Son, I, God the Spirit, together I formed you, I redeemed you, together I changed you, together I put my one name on you. Well, even though the mathematics and the geometrics and the linguistics of a God who is one yet three persons can't be easily mapped out, we understand how Spirit, Son, and Father all work to save us. And that is why God even attempts to reveal details beyond our understanding to us, not so that we could understand, but perhaps so that we could appreciate the words of Exodus which say, whenever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. To this day, Christians who worship one God, monotheistic, But we pray to Father, we pray to Son, we pray to Spirit, we bless one another and end our worship services with the one blessing in the three parts. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Security. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Kindness known in Christ. May the Lord turn His face toward you, look upon you, and give you peace, the work of the Spirit. I want you to be a brilliant, no, not a brilliant theologian, but an observant theologian. Look at these closing Bible passages and see how the Father, Son, and Spirit are all revealed in a unique role so that you could know you are safe. Because God gives you His Word and His words have His power.